We are back with a lady that has been with us before, and we're happy to see her back once again. She is rolling at full steam, Millie Perkins, <laughs> who gave up acting like 20 years ago and for a long time did a, a local television show in, in Oregon. Yes. What was the name of that town? That, um, Jacksonville, Jackson. Oregon. The show came from Medford, Oregon. It was a local TV station. We were doing a news, uh, an interview show, and, and I did the weather in the interviews. Yeah. <laughs> and the last time we saw you, you were here to talk about Table for Five with mm -hmm. John Voigt. Right. And now here you are, back to talk about three pictures you've got out. Well, they're, they're coming out in the fall. They're three movies of the week that I've just done. One is called License to Kill about drunk driving and uh, you must know a lot of those statistics so it's a it's, it was an it was a I felt good about making that one mm. and that is with uh, Don Murray plays Don my Murray. husband and James Farantino and Penny Fuller and it was in and we shot it in Texas and it was a very wonderful show to work on the best of all was it by mm. any chance a true story um, I don't it wasn't a definite true story but there's so many stories like it I mean you could just I mean endless yeah. pages of stories like that and I had all these statistics written on a piece of paper when I came in here about drunk driving and I mean they're extraordinarily frightening and something like one person every 26 minutes dies from a drunk driver yeah. there's a big campaign to try to stop it I don't yeah. think it ever stop it but you know, yeah. mothers against drunk drivers mad and well there's things they can do you know that'll be on in the fall that's CBS and I now, in this story, yeah. don't you, I guess, call the police on Don Murray? Well, I don't call the police. Husband. He's, he's uh, uh, on trial, and which is typical. Usually a drunk driver gets off. In this story, which is also very akin to so many that one hears about, he'd been arrested about six or seven times for drunk driving. He f ends up killing uh, Penny Fuller's and James Farantino's daughter, and James Farantino decides that he wants to fight it and put the man in jail. And I, I've lived with this kind of a situation, and uh, when I see that he's going to be acquitted and get off scot-free after killing someone drunk driving, um, I, I uh, trick him into taking the stand knowing full well that he will um, be convicted mm. with his testimony. It was a very, it was a, it was, I loved working on that show. Working with Don Murray was terrific, and Penny and James and the producers, everybody was terrific. Mm. Dorothy a Petrie. <laughs> <laughs> Want to mention everybody. <laughs> now, you, the other two that you've done. The other one is exciting. It's Anatomy of an Illness, also for CBS, with uh, Ed Asner. He plays uh, Norman Cousins, and I play his wife, Ellen Cousins. It's from the book that Norman Cousins wrote about his experience with uh, um, a fatal illness. Um, and it's called Anatomy of an Illness, which is very well known. And his, his attitude and his approach towards... Um, towards illness and disease, which is very positive and very um, natural, and uh, he did some extraordinary um, things in his approach to curing his cancer, which most of the doctors, all the doctors, disapproved of, and he is walking around 20 years later. Oh, that's a true story. Yeah. 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 And then uh, we got to mention the third one. Oh, <laughs> and Anatomy of Illness also, um, David Ogden Stiers, and he plays Cleveland Amory, and... Um, and Eli Wallach plays Dr. Hitzig, the doctor, and that was good. And the other one is a film called The Haunting Passion with Jane Seymour and uh, Gerald McRaney. A, um, a, a love story about a supernatural creature. <laughs> Somebody falls in love with a supernatural creature. Has a, it's, a, it's, it's a romantic story uh -huh. concerning her. It's, it's hard to explain. Well, it'll be on in the fall. You'll get to see that one. <laughs> you had no problem getting back into the swing of things after 20 years. As we mentioned earlier, I mean, here you are now with three pictures coming out. Yeah. Table for Five did a lot for me. I, I was received wonderfully with it, and uh, I'm, you know, we got these roles because of having worked and shown people that I was back and that I am acting, and I guess I'm here, they believe, now to stay. I did come back in 1980. I, you know, had been living in Oregon for five years and hadn't been working for many years, as we talked on the other show, mm -hmm. and um, uh, did a lot of things. I mean, I read for hundreds of roles for the was last two years. Was that the hardest part you had to do? Table for five? I mean, no, I mean, was it the hardest thing you had to do to get back into the swing of things, was going back out and that auditioning again? But you see, I really <coughs> wanted to this time. All the time before my career, it, I, I hadn't... Um, chosen to be here 
and I I was acting, but I wasn't acting. My husband was a writer. I did a part in a Friends film, and I did this. The Diary of Anne Frank, I was an unknown. I'd never acted. So a career was handed to me on a silver platter, but I wasn't choosing it. And I knew I was an actress, but then I had the children, and then I wanted to raise them myself, and I had stepchildren, and I, I did that, and I always knew I'd be back to acting, but I didn't know when. So anyway... Here I am, and I come back, and I went out on everything. Believe me, I'm, I'm sitting in the casting offices with uh, 30 other women, every color, size, age imaginable, and I was reading like everybody else was. And I did five or six jobs, and then I got table for five, and I had to read for that, and I got it. <laughs> and then the other show, they offered them to me, which was terrific. Uh, and when you went out and read, when you got inside to the, and talked to the casting people, I mean, do they remember you and know who you were? Some do, and then some are very young, and they don't, yeah. <laughs> younger than I. <laughs> has, the, uh, has the business changed much since you've been gone? Oh, it's faster and there's not as much time to waste and there's not as much money to waste and people um, are more cut and dried about it. I see less good work being done. People are so frantic and, you know, the economics in this country and around the world affects the business as much as any place and people... Um, they suffer for it. They can't give what they want to to a project and they can't um, uh, take the time that they would and everyone's hurrying, say, hurry, hurry, because they're going to take the money away if you don't. We don't have an extra day. There's no time to, to do the kind of work you always dreamed you would do as an actor or an actress. You, know? you uh, went through, when you got Diary of Anne Frank, you went through what a lot of uh, models and would-be actresses are going through now. I mean, you were a cover girl and a model, yes. and all of a sudden you became an actress. Yeah. And the transition, I guess, wasn't too tough for you, because Anne Frank, of course, is a classic film. Yeah, yeah I'm sure lucky. I'm mean, I have my little place in history with that, but, I mean, I'd never acted, and I'd never dreamed of being an actress, you know? And I, when they asked me to test for the part, I mean, I even turned down the test because I was shooting a 17 cover, and I was thinking I didn't grow up with money. I thought, well, if I do that test and I can't do the cover today, and the cover means six months more of good work, and so I said no. And then they were furious. They said, well, well when can you come in? And I said, well, I could come in at 7 o'clock tonight when they had to keep the crew there and everything. And I didn't know what that meant over time, <laughs> you know. Right. And I, I, so I didn't know what acting was about, and I hadn't dreamed of it, and I hadn't wanted to be one. So it was, I learned it. I learned what the business was nicely. I was lucky. Yeah. It's a great career, though. I mean, to be that successful and get out of it and then come back and be successful again. It's a dream. I mean, I'm lucky. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, talent has a lot to do with it, I think. Thank you, darling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Millie Perkins, thank you very much. Come Thanks, back and Bill. see us when you get done with the next three. I'll bring some clips for oh, the other Yeah, we wouldn't have any <laughs> clips. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Jason Bateman from Silver Spoons when we come back. Thank you. Thanks, darling. Right. Nice to be here nice again. Nice seeing you again. See you. Okay.